Hello everyone. Oh, wow, that's tart. I'm drinking some grape juice. It's kind of refreshing in this hot weather. Wow, weather changed a lot in a couple of days. It's really, really warm today. Today, we're going to continue in the book of 2 Samuel. And what an exciting read this is becoming. We are going to see every aspect of David's life. And what a life he had, as we're seeing. Wow. What a warrior for God. A man that loved God. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's fantastic. I, I can't say enough. It's just fantastic. I'm so glad that you're continuing to go through the Bible in a year with me. This has been great. Way back when we first started, way back in Genesis, we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot, and I'm looking forward to our continuing studies. All right, today we read chapters 5 through 8 in 2 Samuel. And I'm going to discuss that with you in just a second. But first of all, I have to do my birthday greeting for June. To all my June birthdays, many happy returns on the day of that birth. May sunshine and gladness be given. And may our dear Father prepare you on earth for a beautiful birthday in heaven. Happy birthday, my June babies. <laughs> Our birthday's great. I just had a great birthday. <laughs> All right, let's get to our trivia question. Yesterday's question was, how many days did Jesus spend in the wilderness after he was baptized? 40 days. Today's question to what two individuals in the Gospel of Luke did the angel Gabriel appear? That should be a fairly easy one. All right, so we get to our study. And then I have a couple of things I'm going to share with you. I'm sitting here looking up out at my window. So when I'm looking up, it's like, oh, who's walking by? <laughs> but we need to stay focused, right? All right, let's get to our Bible study. All right, we've learned that David reigns over all of Israel. He was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. So David went and became great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Now, Psalms 121, 7 and 8 says, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Wow. David knew how to formulate prayers. Talk about a prayer warrior. There are some people, their prayers are so deep and rich and so honoring to God and showing great love for God. We can learn a lot about how to pray in the book of Psalms. When we worship, we focus on an audience of one. Remember when David danced through the city and with timbrels and singing, tim, timbrels and singing, and he, um, was really whooping it up, praising the Lord. And his wife, Micah, said, oh, you made a fool of yourself. You acted like one of the commoners. Kind of had her nose up in the air a little bit there. And God punished her for that. She could not conceive any children because she spoke out against God's anointed one. You know, it matters what God thinks when we worship him. You know, how many people sit in church and, 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 and you can see them. They're kind of like, here, like this. It's like, oh, let's put those arms out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when we're running out in the trail, we spread our arms you know, wide and say, oh, God, thank you for this beautiful day. You know, don't be shy in expressing your God in front of people. God will bless you richly for it. The Psalms, in fact, was a book that need to be sung out loud or read out loud with great vibrance, with meaning behind your words, 
Say it with gusto and feeling. Pull it up deep from within you. How many times do we sit in worship services and some of our favorite songs are sung? And you know, especially way back when, when they still had hymnals in church. And we would follow along and sing, sing so loudly. Oh, it was great. That my sister-in-law, after a reminder, she was going to be sending me a hymnal book. Because uh, Ron and I miss that. And we want to start singing more of those type songs in our home to each other. Praising God, of course. How has God been working in your life to teach you to worship in spirit and in truth? That's something to think about. Are you becoming more boldly um, claiming your faith? Are you wearing t-shirts maybe that have, you know, God's not dead, he's surely alive, miracle worker t-shirts. Ron and I have decals on our Jeep. We have a lot of sayings on some different clothing that we wear outside. We don't care. We are worshiping our God. People's recorded prayers are one of scripture's outstanding features. David described God's word as truth. What would you describe God's word as? Truth. Integrity. The only way. Documented. Powerful. Many, many words. Now I want to touch a little bit on There were principles governing kings. And this is in Deuteronomy. Now David, we read where once he came into his kingdom and his house, he gained more concubines and more wives. Now I often wondered about, like, about stuff like that because God never approved of multiple marriages and those such practices. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 17, starting with verse 14. When you come to the land which the Lord your God is giving you, and possess it, and dwell in it, and say, I will set a king over me like all nations that are around me. You shall sur surely set a king over whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren you shall set as king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord has said to you, You shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart Turn away, nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. It shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book from the one before the priest, the Levites. And he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and their statutes. Now, it's different from today's politicians, isn't it? A lot of politicians and presidents have gotten rich being in that office. And it's not supposed to be an office for them. It's supposed to be for the people, to help the people they govern over. And it's a sad thing, the corruption we see going on nowadays with presidents retiring and having millions upon millions of dollars, most time by ill-gotten gains. Well, right here, David knew the principles governing the kings. And I don't know what he was thinking when he did this, but later on we're going to see where it brings him great grief in his life. So, in order for us to avoid deep grief in our life, we need to constantly stay in God's word, read it day and night when we wake up, when we sit down, when we go to sleep. The last words on your lips should be, Lord Jesus, be with me as I sleep. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for another for another beautiful day, another beautiful morning. Lord, be with me throughout my day. We should seek out God's word to know in the way in which we should walk. And we need to remind ourselves before we make a decision, just like David here. David should have thought back to the law and said, oh, I can't be doing this. But like we mentioned before, God uses flawed people sometimes for greater purposes. And we're going to continue reading about David's future work in God's kingdom. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Didn't they make a movie about that? <laughs> All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed that devotion today. I certainly do enjoy bringing these to you. It is a highlight of my day. Now, attached to this video, and I promise I'll attach it. I won't forget like last time. I got some amazing footage of some deer yesterday. Well, one deer. But I threw her some peanuts, and uh, it's, it's really a cute video. And she is with a baby inside her. She's pregnant. It's very cute. So that will follow. I didn't get too much crocheting done. I did a little bit of knitting last night. But tonight, I'm going to make a lot of progress on my scallop pot holder that I had showed you. This one here. And tonight, I'm going to get the first half of it done. Because you make two of these squares and crochet them together. So kind of anxious now to start my next color and finish that first half up. Sometimes, do you get like, when you're crocheting, especially in the summertime, that all of a sudden your hands are dripping wet? And I've been having like hat flashes, like, where is this coming from? Really? I'm 71 years old. I should be kind of done with these. But man, sometimes I'm going, whoo, turn on the fan, open the windows. <laughs> oh my goodness. Such is life. All right, everyone, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. I hope all of you have a blessed evening. I hope you were able to get out today and enjoy some sunshine. And Lord willing, I will be back here tomorrow on God Crochet and Chatter. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is Suzanne and Ron. We are out here feeding this beautiful deer. We're throwing her peanuts. And she's about to give birth soon. Look at the yes. other sides. It's just bursting. She has so a baby large. in her for sure. And she is very friendly. Let's see if I can zoom in on her face. Look at that face. See how she's getting the peanuts? They're good peanuts, huh? Yeah. I can't talk too loud because when I do, she spooks. She hears something in the water. It might be a deer crossing. I'm not sure. You see how she's getting the peanuts? See there how she's eating those peanuts? Isn't she sweet? You want some more? I will, just a minute. Ron sees something over on the other side. I just want to get her eating a little bit more. All right, we're going to go over here. And see, there's there's Ron. Hello. Okay, I'm going to come up here to the baby. Oh, okay, there we go. We're back. Where are they? Oh, can uh, uh, yeah, can't get them too good. There they are, all the little ducks. I don't well, know if you can... little no more. Yeah, we can't see them too good, but they're there. All right, let's go back over here and see this sweetheart of a deer. There she is. Hello, baby. And see, she's eating those peanuts. She says, oh, this is pretty good. Now, she I was, throw she... one or two peanuts. My wife, she throws a whole handful. I do. I'm generous. But she is really enjoying her peanuts. I'm trying to get a shy, side view of her. No, she's fine. Going back to the leaves. And yeah. now she's eating some leaves. Hello, pretty girl. Okay, we'll see how close we can get. I guess she had her fill of peanuts. Hi, baby girl. Well, hello.
Hey, Purchase. All right, we're going to continue walking over here. Such a beautiful girl. Now she's looking for bat. Can't scratch your bat. And this little. is why we enjoy our walk so much out here. She knows that we fed her, and she's pretty calm. And there's her big tummy with the baby. All right, sweetness. Hello, baby girl. There she is. She's keeping an eye on Ron, too. All right, everyone, we're going to continue on our walk. I don't know what else we'll find out here today, but this has been a nice highlight. She doesn't seem to be too spooked by us, which is good. And Walk on down so they can see you. I got it on wide angle. As you can see, this is the trail we're walking. Shirt. And this is Ron's shirt. Oh, right there, honey. That's good. It says, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. My God, that is who you are. All right, everyone. We're going to continue on. Here's our beautiful stream. And we'll be the fond farewell to our little cutie patootie. Goodbye, sweetie. You have a really great day. I hope you've enjoyed your peanuts.